Hi, welcome to everyone's favourite segment, Mailbag. Let's get into it. This one's from, well, you can probably tell what it's going to be. Um, this one's from uh, engineeringminds.org. Thank you very much for sending this one in. Um, it's obviously some sort of, well, I, I know what it is. It's a poster. Spoiler alert. Um, engineering Minds, this is Engineering Minds plural, reminds me of a former fellow video blogger, Todd Sear, I believe his name was, and from an engineering mind. Anyone remember that? That was like the leading. Um, he worked for National Instruments and he did this um, great, um, geez, that's tough to get, it's impossible to get out. Um, it did this great uh, podcast, uh, podcast, video blog back in the day and um, from National Instruments. It was like a National Instruments sponsored thing. Then he left them and um, it just, vanished so that was a shame that was the leading one but I cannot get this out it's like it's stuck together in there like it was still I don't know wet ink when it was printed or something I'm trying to spin it around on itself I can kind of do this to this end but it's not looking good I'm probably gonna end up ripping the thing that was easy Jesus, big! <laughs> I actually, they asked what size I wanted and I foolishly said A0. <laughs> wow. Hello? It's not even going to fit on the widescreen. Whoa, this is heavy. Well, this really is an awesome poster. Check it out. And uh, I've got the smaller one here, um, which is like a, a two size or uh, something like that. And it's a uh, timeline of all the great scientists, mathematicians, chemists, physicists, entrepreneurs, um, and visionaries and game changers uh, taken throughout history. And oh, it's unbelievable the amount of effort put into this. Each person appears at the intersection of the day, month, birth, includes their name, year they were born, any prestigious medals and all that sort of stuff Nobel prizes and all that red lines connect important relationships between people um, it's <laughs> the amount of work that's gone into this is absolutely phenomenal so I will uh, link it in down below I can't possibly uh, go through it all but it's absolutely amazing and it's super high quality in terms of uh, like getting the um, like the large, what was it, A0 one I've got printed. I think it might even be bigger than A0. It's absolutely enormous. But uh, this deserves to be on the wall of every, you know, lab, hacker space, um, and things like that. It's just absolutely remarkable. So hats off. I'll link it in down below. Do yourself a favor. Pick one up. Completely random order. Thank you very much. B. Slattery from uh, Juni here in uh, New South Wales, Australia. No wackers. Let's see what he sent. Ah. Let's have a look. Have a box. Looks like I'm going to open it upside down. All the electrons are going to fall out. Brad's projects. Is this one of Brad's projects? B. Yes. Thought he'd send in a few of the projects he's uh, developed over the past couple of years. They're all open source and further details can be found on bradsprojects.com. Linked in down below. Whoa. It's... Whoa. I'll show you. Whoa. Whoa. Oh, goodness. We had a game last week. It's a game. Black Solder Mask. Matt Black. Matt Black, so oh, I gotta show you this. Oh, that's pornographic. Oh, oh, oh. So, Brad is sending some very cool projects. Check these out bradsprojects.com. And look at it, it's a pong, it's got a retro ball. It's like a um, up to four player pong game. Uh, plus, we've got a USB power meter project. And we've got a binary um, interactive ruler. Cool. You know, I like rulers. And um, I love, I always love these little um, uh, breadboard 
plug-in power supply things. This one looks really useful. It's got a 3.3, 5, and a variable 5 to 16. That is great. Let's check them out. Well, isn't this just beautifully constructed? Look at this, four knobs here, so up to four people can play. USB on the side to power this baby. And um, there's not much on the bottom because um, there's your in-circuit uh, serial programming port. Love how the pots are uh, mounted on there. Very nice, and all the stuff's under there. But this is all open source hardware, um, so presumably you can uh, build your own and whatnot. So, let's power it up. Plug it in. Oh, look at that. A retro ball. <laughs> that is very cool. And there's an Easter egg in here, apparently. Um, it doesn't have labeled like player one, two, three, four on there. I think that's an oversight. There we go. Select mode title. <laughs> Great. I love it. RGB LEDs, LED sketch. No, select. I thought you could push those down. Would have been nice to get a. Uh, Whoop. Oh, there we go. Yep. <laughs> yeah, we can sketch. Etch a sketch. Screen saver, lead sketch. Great race. Woo. Yeah. Terrific. This is great fun. Oh, geez, that's hard. Geez, you've got to be really precise. One lead. Oh, I don't know. How... Oh, how would you do that? Wow. Oh, geez. It's all over the shop. Oh, oh, oh. Losing my balls. Nothing worse than losing your balls. Check this out. Look at the texture on that solder mask, that matte black solder mask. Ah, oh. oh, feels beautiful. None of that glossy rubbish. And if we lift the skirt on that one, check it out. Teensy support brought to you by Kickstarter user Defragster. <laughs> Fragster, love it. Um, and it looks like uh, this one, yeah, there's the uh, Arduino Uno you can put on there. But it looks like this one just uh, runs from a pick. Uh, 16F44K22, and that's about all she wrote. I kind of like how it's all just hidden behind there, and there's all your RGB LED drivers. And the LED driver chips used on there, I haven't seen those before. They're um, like just some uh, generic Chinese uh, driver, not from any of the big name manufacturers. It's a DP5020. Check out the data sheet. And there's the USB power adapter. Um, I'm not too fond of this one because, hey, you've got to scroll it like this. The LEDs are really uh, dim, but there we go. I'm actually displaying the current uh, on the retro ball at the moment. And you've got to switch between voltage and current. Would have been nicer to make it longer and just have the voltage and current on a little LCD. But, of course, you can buy it. There's tons of these on the market now, and I recommend everyone at least have one in their uh, toolkit, preferably one that can measure... Um, yep, it does watts. Nice. Okay. But yeah, I like the ones with the little LCDs that have the graph over time and you can see your current and stuff. This just does your basic voltage, current, and power. Oh, look, we can count up in binary <laughs> on our ruler. Flip flops, uh, SR, JK, toggle, and D. Uh, your logic gates and stuff like that. Cool. Um, very nice. Look at that. If you want to, uh, uh, practice your binary stuff. We've got a uh, conversion table. Yeah, it's all digital stuff. Plus, some footprints. Cool. All linked in down below. Thank you very much, Brad. All open source. Ah, oh, micro and mini B. Thank you very much. Love it. So it's just got a uh, boost uh, converter in there to give you your variable uh, adjustment. Even came with a little adjustment screwdriver. Neat. So it gives you uh, your four rails on your breadboard, of course, your ground, uh, your variable one over here, and your fixed five and 3.3 .3 volts. That's pretty much all you want. Unless you're doing op amps, then you'd need another, possibly another adjustable rail, but geez, you can get two of them. <laughs> no worries. Thank you very much, Don Schaefer from Mount Vernon in Ohio, I believe that is, in the United States of America. Hi to all my Yankee viewers. Yeah, I know, like, Yankee is, like, it's, it's what us Australians call you Americans, Yanks. It's just the way it is, accept it. What do we got? Bag of stuff. A car compass. Two minute teardown, outdoor temp sensor broken, Oregon, two minute teardown, and magazines. You know, I'm a bit of a magazine fanboy. Hope the pages aren't stuck together. Digital machinist. I've never heard of digital machinist. Oh, 
That looks sexy. Look at that. Wow. Didn't know this Digital Machinist magazine for all you digital machinist aficionados. That looks uh, that looks pretty new. It's a calculator kit. Awesome. You know I'm a calculator fanboy, and it's a kit with HP red bubble displays. <laughs> it's a calculator kit. <laughs> ah, fantastic. Ah, uh, by a fellow Australian, apparently. Ah, uh, Tony Nixon. There you go. Um, it's an older version, is it? Anyway. Aha, uh -huh, and it just emulates uh, some HP models, does it? Sweet. There's lots of uh, uh, calculator enthusiasts, particularly on the uh, HP Museum, which I used to uh, frequent quite a few years back, and uh, they do lots of, um, you know, custom and uh, emulated HP products. Absolutely amazing. This is all through holes. Oh, no, it's not all through hole. There you go. It's got a surface mount jobby on that. That's a big surface mount jobby. Are you supposed to put the, uh, I presume that you're supposed to put the uh, socket on there and bend the leads, presumably, because that's not a regular pitch um, surface mount part. So that's interesting. So you socket that uh, baby, presumably. Where are the feet going to go? I guess you'd like, you'd have a hard time putting a foot in that corner if you got your if you've got your calculator like this, you're going to stick it down. Where are your feet going to go? Hmm. Oh, the world is certainly a better place with bubble displays. Look at that seven-segment domed lens goodness. Oh, yeah. He's very kindly sent in all the uh, DigiKey or mouser parts. Um, well, some are DigiKey, actually, um, for the calculator. Fantastic. Thank you very much. I'm going to have to find some time to build that puppy up. I love calculators. And as it turns out, Donna's actually written for Digital Machinist magazine. Oh, it's beautiful. Makes me want to do it. Here he is. 18. Published. Fantastic. I recommend to all newbies out there, go out and get published while you still can. Um, <laughs> because they, it's not too many. Although there are new electronics magazines out here. Anyway, limit switches for the mini mill. There you go. Good on you, Don. Terrific stuff. Put in the resume. Oh, that's great. Wow, it's going to town. Terrific. Ooh, a Climax class locomotive. That sounds good. I'll have one of those. Two minute teardown of a car magnetic compass. There it is. One hung low brand. Let's check it out. Um, I used to work on um, military uh, digital compasses back in the day and they were complicated beasts and now it's all just in one chip. Like before we had to have these uh, multi-coiled big monstrosities and with custom wound uh, coils and everything. It was actually quite a difficult task, but yeah, it's too easy these days. Ugh, crusty burger. Look at that. Oh yes, old school. Look at this. Fluxgate compass with your uh, separate uh, perpendicular coils like that. Fantastic. That's how you used to do it back in the old day before these magneto-resistive um, newfangled stuff. You know, you're getting your smartphones and stuff like that. Did it with a big ass coil or multiple coils, actually. So what we've got here is looks like uh, two separate coils. I think that, yeah, there's only a single connection on each. Uh, the ones I've worked on before actually have a single core with four different uh, oriented coils uh, wound on them, a custom core. And then you basically um, apply a voltage to one of the coils and then the uh, voltage induced in the other coils depends on their relative, you know, orientation to the Earth's magnetic field. So you can actually do it that way. So it's based on uh, the flux in the magnetic core, hence the name uh, Fluxgate uh, Compass. But they just got two separate coils in there, a little blob, chip, and that's it. Oh, but at least it's better than just a, a you know, a little SO8 package um, magnetic compass or whatnot. Neat. But yeah, there's not much to it. But you do have to calibrate it, hence why they all have the calibration button on there, you know, you press your calibration and you rotate it, you know, 360 degree a couple of times around, 720 degrees or uh, something like that. And an Oregon Scientific Outdoor Temperature Sensor. Let's crack it open. Wow, once again, that's more interesting than I thought. Presumably it does more than uh, temperature. So let's, let's dig that board out and see what's under there. Wow, check that out. That's really interesting. Look at the clear body on there and that looks for all the world, like it's got an integrated lead into that. <laughs> Dull. 
I thought that was some whiz bang technology. I think it's just a light pipe. I think it is literally just a lead and the plastic thing is a light pipe. And this is just the lead on the front that just goes blink once per se once every 10 seconds or something to show you that it's alive. Oh, here I was thinking that it's doing something fancy. <laughs> oh, actually, this is uh, this it got me in several ways. Here's your temperature sensor down here. Here's the port where that comes from. So that. That is your damn temperature. Oh, there you go. Well, no, there's there's the thermistor. So that's probably temperature and humidity, uh, I would say. That would be my guess. And this baby up here is a dead giveaway with the 433 on it. That's the uh, 433 megahertz transmitter, and that's the antenna. Yeah, there you go. You can see the bottom of that uh, humidity sensor down in there. It's got the ports to let the air in and of course we've just got a uh, thermistor, old school thermistor down there for the temperature, nothing wrong with that. Hi to all my Belgian viewers, um, don't get many from Belgium, um, Jonas Bonjean, I think, um, from, is that Boom? Is that the suburb? <laughs> Boom? That's great if it is. Alright, oh look at this, look at this, gaffer tape, beautiful. Hey. A stand read the newspaper. It's you. There you go. I don't know. Belgians? There you go. You can read the newspaper. Ah, brilliant. <laughs> All right. Let's have a look. Oh. Whoa. <coughs> That's the crustiest multimeter I've ever gotten. Wow. Wow, like it, the rust is literally falling off it into the box. <laughs> and, right, um, yeah, basically a bunch of old electronics, two minute teardowns. There you go, Jonas has sent in a couple of things and <laughs> he literally found this on the junk bin, like on the rubbish tip and no kidding. That is the crustiest multimeter we've ever had here on the EEV log. Oh goodness, never had a Hanson before. Never heard of them, but isn't isn't it kind of funky? You can imagine this being brand spanking new back in the day. And look at the look at the see-through dial. Oh man, beautiful. Sex on a stick. Look at that. 20k ohms per volt, taut band movement. Oh, it's all happening. Um, two millimeter jacks up here. RF. What? Is, oh, what is that? That's like, I don't know what that is. Uh, I've never seen an RF knob on a multimeter or DB as well. Um, anyway, negative and positive, it's obviously got a uh, DB scale down in there, does it? Somewhere? Bueller? Bueller? Oh, it does capacitance! Actually, yeah, this is like a pretty custom jobby. Um, made in Japan as well, the HS uh, model HS404 for those playing along at home. And yeah, here's all your uh, AC volts and your uh, uh, DB scale as well. Ohms is only 0.11 and 10. Um, and then you've got your RF uh, ranges over here. Really weird ranges like, you know, 7 volts, 1.4 volts, 0.28 volts. Um, 50 microamp movement, of course, corresponds to your 20k ohms per volt. But um, anyway, 28 kilovolts in terms of it must you know they must have some rf probe or something that came with it <laughs> wow yeah specialized bit of kit it's not your regular uh, average multimeter uh, here we go didn't even have any screws on it was just being held on by the rust oh this is not going to be pretty oh my goodness oh have you ever seen a poor old multimeter have you ever seen something so rusted. Oh, that is just ridiculous. Wow. Wow. Anyway, look at the switch mechanism. Look at that. It's got a nice little roller in there. Liking that. But wow, the back case, that back steel case is just totally corroded away. That is remarkable. Standard AA um, powered for your, uh, for your ohms and your whatnot. But yeah, I mean, there's nothing in these. There's just there's just resistors and that's it. But that is that is remarkable. Ugh. 
sorry, but this one's um, not going on the shelf. And this is a motor controller from an extremely cheap e-bike, apparently. So <laughs> let's go. Tianjin Shongzheng Electric Co. Does that come out? I've got the end off. Oh, come on. Yeah, check out all the power trannies down in there wedged against that uh, rail. That's actually quite a reasonably clever solution for a slide-in uh, TO220 power management um, you know, thing, because when you design products in a sliding case like this, like extruded aluminium case, you don't have the advantage of, like, being able to get in there with screwdrivers and screw things in and, and whatnot, you know, put in a pressure bar or something like that, so you've got to have some sort of solution where you can slide the board in, yet it still makes good thermal contact with the side over here, so, yeah, I think it just needs a hammer. <laughs> Well, that took a bit of effort, and that poor little baby there didn't uh, survive. The leads were kind of... Ugh. Now I'm going to clean my damn bench. Anyway, um, yeah, that's a reasonably uh, neat solution there to get those in. It's really difficult to get out. You really did need a hammer to get those out. But yeah, that's like... You're very limited in the solutions that you can do with, uh, like, in, on an inside sliding uh, case like this in terms of uh, getting the heat out of those... Uh, TO220s and well, one hung low brand caps, I'm sure. It's is that like QC passed or whatever. Um, it's okay, you know, it's basically what I expected. Sand troll, they're trolling, we've been trolled. Sand troll, but that's it. Solder mask removed, uh, tin plate for a bit of extra uh, current handling capacity. Bob's your uncle, meh. It's built down to a price. It's actually maybe a bit better than I thought, really. Don't get many letters, actual letters, on the mailbag. Thank you very much, Tom Reed. He's from Motorvale, just here in Sydney. No workers. All right. Let's see what it says. Thank you very much, Tom, for the letter. Yes, uh, Tom posted on the uh, forum that he was looking for a broken multimeter somewhere that he could... Uh, potentially fixed up, so I did one better and uh, just shipped him a BM-235. Hope you enjoy it. This is interesting, it's soft and squishy with a thing on the side that I can feel, so I know pretty much, well, I don't know, actually know, I know what it is, I don't know what it's about. There's, uh, you know, two very different things. Oh, double wrap for our protection. Thank you very much. I'll just, uh, no worries, look at that. We have a, oh, wow, top secret communications of World War II. I am a bit of a uh, war and military uh, type buff, especially in, uh, in terms of uh, nuclear weapons and stuff like that. Um, unbreakable encryption for secret high-level conferences. Sig Sally, the Green Hornet Secure Telephone Conference, Sig Tot. I've kind of heard of... Have I heard of those before? Oh, oh. Thought you might like this book. Many secret patents granted to Bell Labs during World War II. Oh, look at this. Good on you, Donald Mel? 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 Something like that. The Sig Sally and the Sig Tot. Um, this is absolutely like, unbelievable. <laughs> the stuff that they developed during World War II. It's uh, Modulo 2 Arithmetic. <laughs> Boolean Logic, the XOR gate. <laughs> That's pretty basic stuff, um, but vocoder, transmitter, like there's tons of stuff in here. This is brilliant. Oh, look at that. Great photos. Wow. And this is available, well, it, there is a listing on Amazon.com, but um, it, it's not, I couldn't find one for sale. So this could be as rare as hen's teeth, this puppy. I now know all the Yankee secrets. SIGTOT, teletype, cryptographic system for high level secure conferences, Pearl Harbor. Wow. The quick brown fox. <laughs> oh, look at that tuning fork, set of gears cover the teletype. <laughs> this is terrific. Wow. They talk about one-time tapes, you know, is that the old-fashioned one-time pad? Um, encryption, one-time tape. 
It's great. Thank you very much. This is awesome. Hi to all my viewers in the Czech Republic. We don't get too many from there. Um, I think this is from Hardwario. That's a, a name of the company, presumably, um, via Direct Parcel International. And um, I kind of failed again. <laughs> it's an Indiegogo live until February 25th. Sorry. I'm not sure when I actually got it. I don't think it's been sitting here that long. I don't... Maybe it has. I don't know. Sorry. Um, <laughs> yeah. Um, lie. So, hopefully, they met their target for whatever this little thing is. Looks like a little, I don't know, data loggery type thing, perhaps? Let's check it out. I love open source. I also love foam peanuts. Wow. Spunk. Do I have to like rub orange juice on it or something? Is there a secret message? I don't know. Foam peanuts? <laughs> That's the wankiest case ever. <laughs> Look at that. Wow. Big clown. Here, open. We are. It won't open yet. I'll open it on camera. Like as in close up. If, if you don't know, I shoot. What I do is I shoot like all of these openings first on the bench here with my uh, uh, Sony camera and then I uh, line them all up on the floor here and then I take go over to my second bench and then I shoot the up close things. So let's do that, not now, later. Still got more to open. <laughs> Check that out. That is really funky. Let's see what's inside the big clown. Oh. Do it yourself, he's not dead. Ta-da! We have a clown. Is that a do you? Oh, oh, note. Hi, Dave. Please find this red clown suitcase as a warm greeting from the cold Czech Republic. We are big fans of the EUV vlog. Thank you very much. Um, they Two years ago, they started Hardwario. I like the name. Which is designed and manufacturing Big Clown, the new Internet of Things kit for makers. It might, might look like Arduino boards, but it's very different indeed. It's targeting low-power battery-operated. Um, they use the STM32 processors cortex m0 and there is the barcode for those who want to scan in check it out we'll link it in down below there's their lab awesome let's see what we get inside the big clown box oh geez look at that whoa isn't that a bobby dazzler oh wow i think there's multiple layers in here this is insane kit um you've got a power adapter we've got oh, lots of big geez look at this a, um, a, that's a K-type, like a thermocouple um, interface. And what do we got? We've got cases of various descriptions for, obviously, yeah, project enclosure cases. Look at those. Are they 3D? They almost feel 3D printed. If they are, they're very good. Oops, that dropped down. Okay, we've got a little inductor. And, yeah, 3D printed cases. Cool. How did... Oh, I was going to say, how the hell does that one open? There we go. Oh, wow, that's a, that's a nice fit, isn't it? Oh, jeez. Well done. Um, and there we go. Look, got a battery board. Use alkaline. Okay, so it play, it's a system thing that plugs in. This is like a battery solution that plugs in. Oh, I like the, like the look of that. That's an e-ink. That looks like an e-ink to me. LC no LCD. Ah, it looks like some of the um, sharp. Um, sorry, the sharp memory. LC I think it's. A sh is that a sharp memory LCD? Nice. Got our so what? What? Thought that's a. Is that a knob? No. Okay. Oh, it's a purr. Right. Yes. Passive infrared module. Jeez. Look at this. Breadboard module. Oh, look at the. Oh, right. So you can plug that into the into the center of your breadboard, plug your battery solution in over here, presumably, or other stuff. Oh, wow. I'm liking this. Look at that. You can plug that in here, and you've got, like, relay interfaces and everything to your breadboard. Oh, that's neat. I really like that. Wow. Is it all uh, open source hardware? 
Uh, yeah, open hardware, soon open hardware license. Yep, no worries. Awesome. Wow, okay, we've got radio stuff, header, MCU, temp accelerator. Okay, is that like the system? That looks like the system diagram for all that. Wow, a ton of documentation. What? What is, oh, okay, it's just a, it's just a, a grill plate. What? Okay, uh, they must have, yeah, okay, because they assemble into the cases, do they? Right, something like that. I don't know, I'd have to re <laughs> read the instructions. I think you could go to town on this. Jeez, we've even got O-ring seals. Sensor module, relay module, a bridge module, ah, oh, cool, H-bridge, driver, I'm assuming, and a radio module, Sigfox, radio module, plus, looks like we've got little, ah, oh, uh, lux meter, okay, so we've got a lux meter, temperature sensor, barometer, humidity sensor, oh, wow, this is an impressive kit, how much does this baby cost? Oh, I just checked out their uh, Indiegogo campaign, and unfortunately it's finished, but I'm sure you can still buy it, so I'll link it in down below. Sorry I didn't get to it in time, but they raised 128% uh, percent of their uh, funding goal, so they made this thing happen, and it's uh, 369 bucks by the looks of it for this complete kit. But wow, yeah, so it's not cheap, but geez, you get a ton of, ton of stuff in it. I recommend you check out their Indiegogo down below. See if it's uh, something you're after. It'd make a a great uh, solution kit for, um, you know, schools and courses and stuff like that by the looks of it. Okay, so the whole idea of this thing um, is that it's, you know, as he said, it's an Internet of Things uh, solution that allows you to basically assemble together all the stuff you want, all the sensors with the radio and the batteries and all that sort of stuff and put it in the different uh, cases depending on, you know, if you only want something small, then it uh, slides into the small case. If you want something, uh, you know, larger with uh, motor drivers or whatnot, you know, you might have that in the larger case. So the whole idea is that you assemble all this without actually... Um, uh, you know, soldering anything. You just plug them all together. And by the way, these aren't O-rings. They're actually designed to go around the cases like this, which fit together nicely, and then uh, go over there and actually hold the cases together. It's very... like You don't even need screws to put the boxes together. That is really very impressive effort. I really like that. Recommend you uh, check it out. It's a great solution, yeah, for, you know, uh, people who just want to build stuff. Um, I'm sure you can, like, you probably don't have to buy the entire kit. I'm sure they'll, if they don't already, they'll eventually, like, sell all the, uh, part. Oh, jeez, one in there. <laughs> Almost missed that. Jeez, look at that. What is that puppy? Oh, look. Is that a, uh, by filer antenna, is it? So thank you very much to the team at Hardwario. That is thoroughly impressive. Um, wow, like, you know, I could do like a an 30 minute or a half hour video just like playing around with this sort of stuff. Unbelievable. Anyway, check it out down below. Oh, hang on. It's a foam ball. Oh, what? Is it plug on the end of there? It's a big clown nose. <laughs> Cute. Time sensitive. <laughs> Sorry, I don't know when it's, <laughs> it's got a date on it. <laughs> Sorry. Oh, I can rip it. Stupid corrugated things don't work. Poor engineering. Piss poor. Right. Been a huge fan of the channel ever since I was young. Jeez, that makes me feel old. Thanks. <laughs> and just getting into electronics now. He's doing a degree in electrical engineering um, and some electronic design work on the side. It include a prototype touchpad. His latest project um, that will be launching on Kickstarter soon or already. Well, we'll have a look, won't we? And uh, cool bananas. It's a funky touchpad with LED backlights. Kind of like that. So look, I don't know what the pen is. It's a marker. Another crowdfunding project, which I've missed, but um, Jacob, Jacob actually met his uh, goal for this uh, touchpad, which is fantastic, like 500 and something backers. Awesome. And I actually rather like this. Look at this. It's got like an overlay based system and you get like some other colored overlays on there that you whack on. That's quite novel. I like that. And it's uh, backlit. Well, let's actually check that out. Let's plug it in. 
So what it is is basically a uh, USB HID uh, compatible keyboard. So you simply plug it in and you can like you like uh, program it to do various things. Nice. You sit it on your desk like that. I love the uh, the rubber on the bottom makes it uh, stick very nicely and you can just have all your hotkeys. Sweet. All right, let's see if it works. It actually um, already hooked up. No problems at all. It auto detected on Windows. Not a problem. And by the way, it's got a little uh, vibrator motor on the back there to give some tactile feedback. So Jacob's already uh, set up some keys on here. So let's press. Tell you what, seems a bit touchy. If I touch the uh, see, and that, that key there just lit up, that one lit up down there, and I'm not actually touching those. So if you like move it across your bench, um, it looks like it can uh, get some false positives on that capacitive touch sensor. That probably needs to be tweaked a bit. This thing um, is <laughs> seems very temperamental. It threw me at first, but apparently you've got to swipe across here, and this will give you... So it have to be... It's really temperamental. But, but there are modes you've got to put it into, which is rather clever, and it can actually detect swipes across there. Yeah, it's got four LEDs lit up at the moment on the bottom. And if I focus over here on this window, and a Kickstarter doesn't work yet, the program... Oh, oh there we go. No. War warning? What? When in the programming mode... <laughs> warning. When in the programming modes... There you go. It's put the text in. <laughs> Delete that what? Okay, did we accidentally enter a programming mode? It's kind of, whoa Page up page down. It, it, it's doing stuff um, I think dummy me is um, just not uh, Just not using this correctly. I'm supposed to um, Yeah, I <laughs> It's got so many modes and things that I Did get it I did get it to use the Kickstarter button and it went to the Kickstarter page, I swear I got it. I'm just too dumb to reproduce it. <clears throat> yeah, it's got different uh, command sets, and you can set them, but, oh, jeez, no. I More <laughs> more practice required, I think. But it, it, it does work, and I like the concept. Um, I'm just not figuring out this command set thing yet, Windows things. And it's cool that you can actually swipe and change command sets. Very powerful. Um I just wish there was more weight in it um, because, you know, you've got a cable on here. It can move around uh, quite easy. If, the, you know, a bit of heft in there would have been, you know, would make it uh, nicer on the uh, bench. Of course, you could have it, uh, you know, like Bluetooth battery powered um, type keyboard version as well. Some people like those. Some people don't. Um, but, yeah, I rather like the solution. So I rather like the concept. So check it out. It's a programmable key matrix. For your, you know, PC, Windows, whatever, even Mac, I guess. Um, and check this out. This is another thing it's good for. This is like an Eagle CAD um, overlay for it. There you go. Eagle CAD overlay. And um, I, I don't use Eagle, but you could have Altium. You could have, um, uh, you know, KeyCAD or whatever it is. And uh, you could have your own custom overlays to do shortcut keys to do various stuff. And that is very, very handy. Um, of course, the problem with that is once you get used to this, if you go to another machine and try and do your PCB layout without one of these, <laughs> you're screwed. Oh, what happened there? I think I pressed a button and it did something weird. Now I'm just tiny. Going through a few Aussie ones. Uh, thank you very much. I presume it's virtual access. Um, or is that like just an old... It might just be an old sticker, perhaps. Um, anyway, let's crack it open. Where's it from? Melbourne, Burke Street. Like Melbourne. It's not as good as Sydney, of course. Well, yeah, it is better in a lot of ways, but you know, Sydney is Sydney. So suck it, Melbourneites. <laughs> All right, Dave. These cards are from Alcatel 565 Megbit PDH Mux. They receive optical and common cards. Four E4s each of 140 megabits would be muxed together and sent over the optical fiber. Thank you very much, Mark. Jeez, there's not much on there. Um, I've done fiber optic uh, stuff before, and yeah, it's looked very similar. There's like 
fiber optic module on there. There's, um, you know, some uh, high speed uh, like differential lines and stuff like that. And um, power supply and not much else. Oh, but this has got some voodoo on it. It's got some cans. We can lift the skirt on those cans. Beauty. There you go. That's what we're looking at here. Thank you very much, Mark. And uh, we've got some metal cans. Check out this one first. There's not much on it. I thought uh, that was um, optical interface. That's not. That's your uh, SM, um, SMA interface ones. Look at the uh, ceramic hybrid. They've got down here, though. Wow, look at that. And that's what the like <laughs> the heat pipe uh, really going out to the huge heat sink on the side of the rack. And of course, uh, you know, if you have to buy these, um, I, you know, if you've got one of these blowing, good luck getting another one. Hmm. I presume that they're delay lines. Check it out. Like, you know, 1.75 nanosecond delay line. Okay. You could have just used a PCB trace, I guess. I, I, I presume they are. Like 0.75 nanosecond delay line? Okay. Obviously needed. Made in France. I do all my French viewers. And check this out. We have a differential pair mod. <laughs> have you ever seen a differential pair mod? <laughs> That's fantastic. <laughs> I love it. Look at this. They've added some wiggles in there. Oh, sharp corners. All the electrons are just going to fly off the edge there. Um, but yeah, obviously they're length matching uh, those traces or those pairs. Oh, well, that wasn't very exciting. I took the heatsink block off and I expected to find like, um, you know, uh, like a dye or exposed area under there. No, they're just getting the heat out of the uh, the ceramic block there. So what the hell is that thing? Look at it. It's a big BGA. Oh, no. Is it a PGA? No, either a BGA or PGA. I don't know. I'd have to take the metal back off. Couldn't be bothered. But uh, yeah, big ceramic hybrid. Wow, what a beast. Some sort of, you know, like power amplifier, obviously. Well, this is one convoluted beast. I've taken all the uh, cans off the top here and check this out. Here's our fiber optic uh, transceiver here with a ceramic hybrid driver. Look at that. And it shoots out here, goes wiggle, 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 wiggle. Yeah, it goes into here, which it looks like it's a splice which goes from the uh, yellow to the orange, because that makes it go faster, obviously. Um, look, have they got it? No, I don't No, I don't think that's a splice. It's just coming out. And uh, then that goes down into the uh, the optical connection down there. What is that? Oh, SC. Jeez, I forget. <laughs> it's been so long since I uh, did fiber optic uh, stuff. And then, oh, look at that. Nice little gold package ceramic down there reminds me of like geez what is this out of any date code on this is this like out remind that sort of package reminds me of like uh, you know the 60s or uh, early 70s yeah telecoms gear like this is absolutely fascinating you've seen ridiculously complex uh boards that i've looked at before and you know, even even something like this, like there's a lot of um, voodoo which goes into uh, getting high speed uh, transmission right like this. I know it's you know it's much simpler these days, but you know back when this was done, I don't know what would this be a 1980s uh, vintage or something perhaps. Um, and you know that was rocket science back then to get uh, you know these sorts of uh, speeds. You know hundreds of megabits. In this case, I think it's 565 megabits. It's just one of those, you know, unsexy fields of uh, engineering that <laughs> you just, you know, that has zero public visibility. You know, all of your internet and your phones and all your other uh, traffic that you just take for granted um, goes through all, uh, you know, specialised bits of hardware and ridiculously complicated uh, stuff. Like, I'll see if I still got the board. Hang on. Yeah, here it is. Just like stupidly complicated stuff like Vertex 2 uh, Pros, you know, and all these Centillium uh, ASIC uh, chipsets for uh, comms and things like that. I mean, the amount of engineering that goes in into something like that, the, uh, you know, the engineering teams involved, just, you know, the team just writing the uh, Verilog or VHDL to go into this. And it's all, you know, it has zero public visibility. Yet this is like bleeding edge engineering stuff, you know, just as, you know, stuff like this would have been uh, bleeding edge uh, back in the day to do stuff like this. And you can, you know, make a you know, huge and uh, profitable career out of uh, designing 
these sorts of uh, telecom products. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed Mailbag. If you did, please give it a big thumbs up. Sorry if your Mailbag is still sitting on the shelf. I do just pick them off randomly. I've still got a whole bunch of other uh, stuff there. But anyway, as always, comments and links to all the stuff mentioned in the Mailbag down below. Thanks to everyone who sent stuff in. Catch you next time. Hello.